Hi, I'm Missy Wren. I promised I was going to update you on my experience in Seattle a couple weeks ago attending as a member of the Association of Professional Humane Educators. I consider myself a humane educator, a humane trainer, because I incorporate compassion, my intellect in terms of understanding herd language, her dynamics, recognizing that horses and all creatures have a sentient nature. And it is our responsibility to interact with other species in a way that respects them, not control them through our, our human dominance, but to work with them, and I'm specifically speaking of horses, working with them in terms of herd language, her dynamics and her psychology. So attending this conference was so much fun. It was at the Woodland Park Zoo every day. We had uh, wonderful um, uh, discussions and classes that I attended. Uh, they were mainly for dogs and cats. The humane societies across the nation, many of them converged on this conference. They have this conference every year. Next year it'll be in Florida, which I hope to attend, but I, I don't know. We'll see if I've got a gig in Florida that I can kind of dovetail uh, attending that conference. But what's wonderful about this association, they try to incorporate everybody. So people on the West Coast, and, and we had people from uh, Charleston attend. Oh my gosh, the, um, the talk that the Charleston Humane Society gave was just amazing. Those, those women were absolutely awesome. The uh, attendance was men and women, and it's such a compassionate group. I just uh, feel privileged to be amongst this group and to be one of the members of this association. It really heartens me to know that there's these wonderful groups of people, like-minded, who recognize that all creatures on this earth have a sentient nature, that they all have uh, pain, they feel pain, they have emotions, uh, that we need to respect that. So what humane educators do, and I'm just speaking generally, because uh, don't get mad at me if you're a humane educator and you watch this and you go, oh, I do a lot more than that. Um, just to generally speak, humane educators uh, focus a lot of their time in the schools, uh, helping kids have interaction with animals and teaching kids compassion and teach them about animals that that animals do have feelings that do have sense of family you know herds and dogs have packs you know cats are litter all those things that kids may not otherwise experience some of the humane educators have the opportunity to take kids to horse sanctuaries which to us to all of you who are watching that is dear close and dear to our hearts the sanctuaries and so that kind of brings me to uh, a little bit of discussion about the sanctuaries i provide as most of you know if you're watching this you know i provide uh, all of my training the whole horse dvd series for free on youtube as well as my gentle horse training with starting under saddle that they're all over four hours of horse training in a gentle way and there is this great awakening. People are recognizing that we don't need to use our human way of controlling horses, that we can actually use a herd language to help our horses understand us, what we're asking, and we don't need to use force and dominance in a human way, giving a horse the choice of do it or else. No, we can actually work with their nature and their uh, language. And when we do that, we no longer have to use devices and pain and force to control. We can use their nature to help them understand what we're asking because really horses aren't born outlaws. None of them are born dangerous. We make them dangerous because we think, you know, it's a thousand pound animal, which can be dangerous. But when you understand how to communicate with the horse, they aren't dangerous. There's caution that we must take. But we have gone over the top with our fear and we have uh, implemented fear into our kids when it comes to being around horses. You know, all the, the old paradigm of fear. And so when we approach a horse with fear, um, they're gonna give us a reason to be fearful. If we approach our horse with fear authentically, expressing it and letting the horse know that I'm afraid, 
now you're not a liar to the horse you're being authentic so if you're afraid of your horse i'm going to kind of shift gears here for a minute if you're afraid of your horse i encourage you to just tell your horse that they will understand through a vibration and uh, we've talked about the virtual energy field the vef and you can learn about that on my videos and i'll uh, put it down below uh, the videos that you can watch and then also there's videos up here that you know little tags that are going to come across that you can click on those and that'll talk about it as well but the fear when we're afraid best to just say to your horse look i'm afraid and we can just work this out if we go by the old paradigm that said don't let your horse see your fear don't you know cover it up well now you're being inauthentic and your horse senses that you're now a liar and i don't know about you but i don't trust a liar and i imagine you don't either so if you are lying to your horse by how you feel and trying to cover that up that horse senses that because that virtual energy field those neurotransmitters that science has determined that has measured that we share this virtual energy field at least 10 feet but i believe it's much more and like i said watch those videos uh, to learn about that but you've got to be authentic and part of my humane education is peeling away the layers of our old programming that told us to cover up our fear and to buck it up and be the boss. Well, being the boss in a human way doesn't work uh, in, in maintaining a horse's character and confidence. Uh, when we humanize it, being the boss, we need to be the compassionate herd leader boss, which doesn't mean um, hitting and uh, hurting and giving the choice to the horse between pain or do what I'm asking. So you don't need to use that. That's an old paradigm and we need to shift away from that. And my training the whole horse and my gentle horse training videos, they're all free for you to learn how to do this without using force. So do click on the links to watch training the whole horse. It's over four hours. Get ready. Uh, gentle horse training is 29 episodes that I've uploaded. It, for whatever reason, the verbiage says 14, but it's 29. I keep changing it to make it update, but it just won't update that. Oh, well. So watch all of that, and you'll learn that you don't need to use bits, spurs, whips, all of that. It's pressuring and release and bonding. And that bonding is really the connection. And the horse does want to please you. He truly, she truly does. They just need to understand what you're asking. And you need to ask in a way that they understand and can learn quickly without being afraid of you. That's the key. I don't want to train my horse out of fear. I want to train my horse because my horse sees me as a compassionate herd leader and goes, yeah, I would like to be with you because I feel safe with you. That's what I want. That's, that's that deep abiding relationship that's what I live for so if I can help you by the way I am traveling a lot I'm in Florida next month I've got so many trips trout um, scheduled for this summer but if you need me to come to your barn I love doing that usually it only takes me a couple of days to kind of straighten things out get you on track uh, so if you need to uh, have me come and help you I would love to do that just email info at missyren.com or call toll free 888-406-7689 uh, also go to my website missyren.com click on horse training there's a form you can fill out um, we can get you a quote on what it costs to have me come to your place and work with your horses or get a group together I love doing groups as well so you have a great day and I hope to see you bye